Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us in a celebration of National Breastfeeding Month. August, obviously, is National Breastfeeding Month, and Christiana Care is an international leader in supporting moms who breastfeed. So today we're joined by Christiana Care's Chair of Pediatrics, Dr. David Paul, and Christiana Care's Clinical Leader of Patient Education and Lactation Services, Mindy Neff. They're here to discuss the benefits of breastfeeding and the resources available here at Christiana Care. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, madam. So Dr. Paul, we'll start with you. American Academy of Pediatrics recommends exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months before introducing other nutritious complementary foods. So talk to me about, you know, the benefits of breastfeeding in those first six months. Uh, well, first of all, thanks, Me uh, Megan, for having us today. Uh, happy to happy to join in and um, talk about the benefits of breastfeeding. There are really multiple, multiple benefits of breastfeeding. First off, we know that when children are breastfeed, they have a, a decreased risk of different types of infections, such as ear infections and uh, diarrheal diseases. And then there are lifelong effects like a, a reduction in obesity as a child and, and as an adult, and even things like a reduced chance of having asthma uh, throughout the life course. So uh, multiple benefits uh, to breastfeeding for, for the child. And recently, the AAP also said there are continued benefits from breastfeeding beyond one year. And then, you know, up to two years, they're saying that they would support now, especially they're seeing benefits in the mother. You know, so talk about the details behind this new recommendation and the potential benefits for moms. Right. So that is something new in the AAP recommendations. And um, I think we know that that breastfeeding beyond a year is not for everybody, um, but it is certainly an option. And there are families who choose to, to breastfeed beyond a year. Uh, what we know from the literature is that if moms breastfeed beyond a year or for a longer period of time, specifically, they have a decreased risk of ovarian cancer and breast cancer um, and diabetes. And so, uh, Again, something to consider health benefits to the baby, but we know that there, there are benefits to, to mom if she breastfeeds as well. And Mindy, so many pregnant women, you know, sometimes are like, where, where do I start? How do I learn how to do this? Um, so talk about the resources that we offer for moms while they're pregnant. So we have a lot of resources. Um, your OB office has a lot of information about breastfeeding to teach you about benefits of breastfeeding. There's also an online class that if you go on the website, you can register for, and it's a video-based platform with quizzes and videos in it so that you can see latch and positioning. And so the nice part about that is they also have access to the class after delivery as well. And we have plenty of help for them here in the hospital, but some people, if they have concerns, also opt for a telehealth visit prenatally so we can go over any concerns they might have, if they have questions about pumps or if they have questions about if any of their medical issues might be problematic, that's a way for, you know, to, to discuss it before they get here. So you mentioned plenty of resources there at the hospital. What is that experience like once you've had the baby? So once you've had the baby, we get the baby skin to skin as long as everything's medically going okay with mom and baby and lots of support from all of our staff. So getting the baby skin to skin, helping with the first latch, helping moms learn how to hand express their milk. We have a great book that parents go home with that has called Care of You and Your Baby has all their resources in it, which is awesome. Uh, nurses are all really well-trained to help with breastfeeding. If there are any concerns, we have a staff of inpatient lactation that would come into the room and see what issues there might be. Also, we have follow-up as far as after they go home. We have this great program called Twistle for breastfeeding. It's the past two years, we have over 4,000 people who have utilized the program. And it's nice because it's a texting program as well. And things go out such as what to expect at this time. Do you have any concerns? And they can either request a text back, a call, or they can come in for our outpatient practice to be seen in person. Fantastic. So, you know, that was my next question as we go through the line, you know, what happens, you know, once you go home. So absolutely, you know, so many resources, but, you know, a couple months down the line, mom's going back to work, you know, thinking about needing to pump, especially if she works in person, you know, do you have any tips for making that, you know, an efficient and enjoyable experience? 
it's nice to give yourself about three to four weeks before you're going back. And we also, they can call the support line that is seven days a week and ask questions about, this is what I'm doing now. This is what I'd like to go do when I go back. Um, am I re working remotely? Do I have a commute? And what we can do is kind of develop a plan with the patient together to see what plan is going to work best for them, what their goals are, so that it's not as stressful and they can prepare ahead of time. There is also, uh, most insurances cover, we have a pump closet at the hospital, so we can give insurance-based pumps so that they would have it ahead of time. And what's nice about that is that it's really hard with lag time and to figure out which pumps are available. So it's nice that they go home with a pump for down the road when they need it to go back to work. Absolutely. And if you're watching and would like more information about the resources that Mindy shared, check those comments below on this Facebook Live, and we have the links to all of those programs that she just referenced. So Dr. Paul, let's go back a little bit big picture. You know, the end of this month is Black Breastfeeding Week, which aims to end the gapping racial disparity in breastfeeding. Talk about that gap and why it's so important. Well, we talked about the the potential health benefits of, of breastfeeding, and we know that uh, not only in Delaware but throughout the country there are disparities in uh, in comparing black moms to white moms in what proportion of them start breastfeeding and what proportion of them continue breastfeeding at three months and at six months, and uh, we want to do our best to support all all families who come here, but. Um, it, it's something that we're really trying to, to reduce, you know, specifically are the disparities in breastfeeding because we want all of our health outcomes to be equal across the population and, and, and in, in black and white families as well. I mean, one specific area that we know uh, that we have disparities here and we see disparities throughout the country is, is in breastfeeding premature infants. And so we have some specific programs. We are starting here in our neonatal intensive care unit to try and support um, some of our Black families in, in breastfeeding, um, specifically with lactation support, as, as Mindy mentioned, and providing donor breast milk if moms aren't available to, to provide their own breast milk. Uh, and again, it's a it's it's something that we see nationally, but something we're specifically starting to focus here at Christiana Care as well. And you mentioned those who aren't breastfeeding. You know, some women make that decision, or medically they're unable to breastfeed for whatever reason. And you know, they're looking at formula options or or donor milk. You know, where can they get more information about making that choice? Yeah. Well, just to just to be clear, specifically, the donor milk is something that we use for premature babies here um, who are in our neonatal intensive care unit. It's not something that's available for a baby who's born a term or, or a baby who's um, in the community. Um, I mean, we know that breastfeeding is not for for every family, and we want to support that choice of uh, of a mom to come in who decides not to to breastfeed. And uh, the best resource for that for a family or for a mom is probably to talk to her pediatrician or try and make an appointment with a pediatrician before the baby's born uh, to, to talk about that. Many moms and may, many families will do that. Um, they're a great resource. We have pediatricians here in the hospital and the lactation team and the nurses are also great resources. And so if families are unsure, we want to do our best to educate families on the benefits of breastfeeding and make sure that they're aware. But again, if their choice is, is to formula feed, we want to support that choice as well. Uh, but if, um, if you're think, thinking about making that choice before the baby's born, make an appointment with your, with your pediatrician. If you don't have one, ask your friends, ask your families, and, and almost uh, all the pediatricians in, in our or Wilmington and our Delaware community will be happy to talk to you about the benefits of breastfeeding um, or, or uh, formula feeding in general before the baby's born. And you know, you've spoken a lot over the last couple of months about 
in regards to the formula shortage, how to safely give your child formula. So, you know, while I have you, it's a great time to reference that again, you know, for someone who might still be looking for their specific formula. I know the formula shortage is, you know, getting better, but not totally fixed. You know, what are your tips for making sure that you're, you're following the right guidelines if you're formula feeding right now? Yeah. And we're certainly happy that, that that formula shortage is easing up in the community. And, um, and, and we've said this in the past on, on, on these kind of forums, but just to be clear to everybody, if you come to the hospital and you choose to formula feed your baby, we have plenty of formula here in the hospital for your baby. It's not an issue in the hospital um, over the past six months, months or so. It's been more a supply chain problem um, in, in our community as well. So if, if you can't find a specific formula for, for your baby, there are oftentimes substitutes that can be used. Um, there are some babies who require specific formulas that, that you can't substitute, but in many cases, you can use a different brand or a different type of formula for your baby. If you have any question about that, you should talk to your pediatrician. We know it's, it is very important never to dilute formula, to try and spread it out by adding extra water. That can, that can get your baby in, in, uh, uh, you know, in trouble as well. And never try and make your own formula as the f formula shortage kind of was at its height. There were recipes out there for making your own formula. Um, don't do that. That can be a potential danger to, to your baby as well. So when in doubt, call your baby's pediatrician, um, find a, a different formula that can, that can be used. And, um, and, and hopefully families aren't out there struggling anymore to find formula. From what we understand, it, it's, it's, it's greatly eased. And uh, I certainly hope that that's the case. Absolutely. So while I have both of you, this is an answer question for both of you, because a lot of moms are concerned if they're breastfeeding about the COVID vaccine and COVID in general. So what is your message to those who are worried about both, worried about getting COVID and worried about potentially whether or not they should get the vaccine if they're breastfeeding? Sure. Go ahead, Mindy. You want to go first? Definitely get the vaccine. <laughs> Free and protected, asking people around you if they've had the vaccine. So, you know, it's great for babies that when their parents are vaccinated, but also it's, you know, it's a very different world. And we, we're also finding a lot of people are breastfeeding longer because of the pandemic and just the after effects to make sure that that's something they can, those antibodies are something they can give their baby. But protecting yourself so you can protect your baby is a great, great thing you can do. Right. And so we know that it's very uncommon or unlikely for a baby to get COVID during the birthing process. However, um, if a mom has COVID or a family member has COVID right after birth, that baby can potentially um, get the COVID infection. So if mom is protected and the family is protected, the baby is much less likely to get it after birth because the family is less likely to get it. Uh, we also know that the COVID vaccine has been given to now millions of pregnant women in the United States and throughout the world, and that it is safe, and that potentially, uh, well, we know that those, if, if moms make antibodies to COVID, that those antibodies can pass through not only the placenta, but into breast milk. So um, getting the COVID vaccine is something you can do to protect yourself, to protect your baby. And it shouldn't, shouldn't only be mom, it should be all of the family members as well. That's a term called cocooning. So you kind of protect everybody around the baby uh, because we know the baby now can potentially get, get the vaccine at six months. But before that, that's the best thing that you can do to protect your baby from a COVID infection. And, and we know it's only August, but it's almost flu season. And the flu vaccine is, is the same spiel, right? Get the flu shot, encourage your family to do so as well. Exactly. Easy to do um, and uh, very safe and uh, something you can do to protect yourself and the baby. And we do know that pregnant moms are at higher risk of getting sick, but both from influenza and from COVID. And um it's, it's not something that you really want to take a chance with. That's something that can lead yeah. to premature birth or babies can't be healthy without healthy moms. And so exactly. um, really um, something, something to consider to protect both mom and baby, absolutely. So before I let you both go, what is the most important thing you want people to take away about breastfeeding today? Mindy, you can go first. 
uh, most important thing is ask for help early and you know we're here to help you with whatever your goals are and lots of support both while you're pregnant and afterwards for you and your family so reach out and we'll reach back out to you but just a great great gift that you can give your child so we're here to we're here to do whatever we can great dr paul yeah, we talked about the health benefits to, to mom and to baby. And we didn't talk about the bonding. Mindy briefly mentioned skin to skin care, but it is something that you can you can do to, to help your own health, to help your baby's health throughout their life course. And um, it's just really special for, for moms and babies um, to breastfeed. So um, many families come in, come come to the hospital already decided whether they're gonna uh, breastfeed or not. We want to support your decision. And if you're undecided, we want to give you as much information as possible and as much support as possible um, to help you breastfeed. So um, we're, as Mendy said, we're here for you. We have, we have lots of resources here. We know it's not easy. It's not easy to breastfeed, um, but we want to be here to support you and support you and your baby going home healthy uh, for those days when, when they first go home from the hospital and beyond. Thank you both so much. And if you're watching and have any other questions after this live wraps, please put those in the comments and we can chat with you there. And as I mentioned earlier, all the links to these resources shared today are in the comments below. Thank you all so much and have a great afternoon.